Hello. Uh, welcome to this blog post. And listen, I, I really appreciate you being here. I hope you'll bear with me today as I'm using some new technology. I'm learning some new technology because I wanted to be able to talk with you. I wanted you to be able to see me, but not big and bold. And I wanted to be able to talk with you and show you slides um, so you can easily follow along. Today we are continuing our study on the Victory Series and the topic of today's um, study is going to be to know, to know. So let me introduce myself for those of you that do not know me. I am Regina Sanders and I am the Bible coach. Um, I am an author. I am a wife, a mother, a minister, and a um, I just share the love of Jesus everywhere I go. And I thank God that he has provided me with a business in which I can do his work. Um, and that is the coaching industry. I received my accreditation as a life coach in 2017 from IACCC after, after surviving stage three colon cancer. So I am a survivor and I don't know that you can see it and especially with it being so little, but I have my survivor necklace on today. And, um, you know, God healed me. I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. 61% of the people diagnosed with stage three colon cancer survive. The rest do not. Some facts about colon cancer. Colon cancer is the second deadliest cancer in the world, but it's totally preventable, totally preventable. So I encourage you, be tested. In the United States, testing typically begins at age 50. Um, I believe the reason I wasn't diagnosed sooner or it wasn't found sooner is because at the time of my diagnosis, I was 44 years old. I was not a textbook case, therefore they didn't run the test, um, which meant that I had 10 inches of my colon removed. I woke up with a colostomy, which I walked around with until January of 2017, and um, I had to go through 12 rounds of chemotherapy. Now, I don't tell you all this just to have a pity party or for you to say, oh, poor her. Because listen, God taught me so much in this valley of the shadow of death. And one of the greatest things he taught me was how to receive from him and from others. And he blessed me. He blessed me during this. Uh, he blessed me with a debt-free home, praise the Lord, at a time that there was no income coming in. So, you know, we can only say it came from God because my husband shut down his business to be with me, to strengthen me, to encourage me, to take me to doctor's appointments. Had it not been for my husband and my parents, um, and of course God, you know, the likelihood of me making it is m greatly diminished. Um, I had a wonderful, wonderful support team. But God taught us about trusting him, about him being our provider and about him bringing us into that victorious lifestyle. And that is why today we uh, look at this victory series, because God wants you to live a victorious lifestyle. Now, I uh, want to give a shout out to Patricia King. Uh, because this great woman of God helped me more than she can even imagine. Uh, about two weeks before I received the diagnosis of stage three colon cancer, God led me to order her book. And that book is Decree a Thing and It Shall Be Established, Job twenty two twenty eight. And this is a book of decrees. God talented this woman with the ability to take his word and write it out in formats that we can decree over our lives every day, giving us 
the ability to give his word an assignment over our lives. Because Isaiah, I believe it's 55, 11, tells us that God's word does not return to him void without first accomplishing what it was sent out to do. So, we are sending out his word. We're giving it an assignment over our lives. I am going to begin today's series by reflecting back upon the um, declarations for victory. I believe when we first started this series, I shared these declarations with you, but it's been a long time, and so this is a reminder. I encourage you to um, repeat these after me, and if you need to pause to do it, that's okay. That's okay. How, whatever works best for you. But repeat this declaration after me and repeat it out loud, not just in your mind, because your words hold creation power, as is written in Job 22, 28. Decree a thing, declare a thing, and it shall be established. So today, we are establishing victory in your life. Let's begin. I am a child of the living God. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I am a new creation in Jesus and old things have passed away and all things have become new. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I am not under guilt or condemnation, I refuse discouragement because it is not of God. God is the God of all encouragement. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I do not listen to Satan's accusations. For he is a liar, the father of lies. I gird up my loins with truth. Sin does not have dominion over me. I flee from temptation. But if I do sin, I have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ. I confess my sins and forsake them. God is faithful and just to forgive me, cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I am cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I am an overcomer because of the blood of Jesus and because of the word of my testimony. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and I shall confute every tongue that rises up against me in judgment. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought captive into obedience to truth. I am accepted in the beloved. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am not the slave of sin. <coughs> Excuse me. I am not the slave of sin, but of righteousness. I continue in his word. I know the truth and the truth sets me free. Because Christ has set me free, I am free indeed. I have been delivered out of the, the domain of darkness and am now abiding in the kingdom of God. I am not intimidated by the enemy's lies. He is defeated. And for this purpose, Christ came into the world to destroy the works of the evil one. I submit to God and resist the devil. The enemy flees from me in terror because the Lord lives mightily in me. I give the devil no opportunity. I give no place to fear in my life. God has not given me a spirit of fear, 
but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Terror shall not come near me, because the Lord is the strength of my life, and he always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. In Christ, I am the head, not the tail. I am above, not beneath. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, and none shall touch me. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. I have been given power to tread upon the serpents, the scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall injure me. No longer will the enemy oppress me. I defeat him by the authority that Christ has given me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. Amen. Amen, my friend. Is that not a victory-founded uh, declaration? A victory-founded declaration. And listen, today's topic is to know, and you can know beyond any shadow of a doubt that you live a victorious life, that God desires for you to live that victorious life. Our foundation scripture for today is Romans chapter 6, verse 16, and it states, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? Listen, what we are being taught here is simply, as it is written, you cannot serve two masters, for you will love one and hate the other. Whom do you serve today? Are you a slave to sin, which results in death? Or are you walking in obedience to God, your Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, and Holy Spirit, the comforter that was sent for you to help you live your victorious life because obedience results in righteousness. Obedience results in righteousness. Know who you're serving. You can know that. There doesn't have to be a question about it and it's your choice. God doesn't force you to serve him and to love him. He invites you to do it. But the choice is ultimately yours. So to know comes from Strong's Greek number 6063. And it instructs us to see also Greek number 1492. It means to know, to know anything, to know, get knowledge of, understand, perceive of any fact, the force and meaning of something which has definite meaning, to know how to, to be skilled in. It is to have regard for one, to cherish, to pay attention to. And we're directed back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Um, it is first mentioned in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, which states, So do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. God knows exactly what you need before you ask him. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? He already knows. He's just waiting for you to ask so that his hands are untied and that he can bless you to the fullest. It's last mentioned in Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written on him, which no one knows except himself. This is a picture of Jesus, and, and we don't even know what name he's going to be going by here. But he knows it. He knows it. And I believe there will be a time that he'll reveal it to us. The time may not be right now, but he will. That's my belief. 
So we look now to Strong's Greek number 1492, uh, and it's a root word, which means to see, to perceive with the eyes, to perceive by any of the senses, to perceive, to notice, to discern, to discover. It is to see, to turn the eyes, the mind, the attention to anything. I want to interject right here. To turn the eyes, the mind, the attention to anything. When circumstances of life come upon us, what's the first thing that the enemy tries to do? He tries to turn your eyes, turn your mind, turn your attention away from God away from his written word, to that problem. And then he tries to insert these thoughts which magnetize or magnify the problem, which enlarge it in our mind, to steal our peace, our joy, and to insert fear into our lives. Because he knows if he can do this first through the mind, then he can move it to the heart. And it grows just like a root of bitterness does and affects every area of our life. But we have a weapon against him. That is our Holy Bible. It is God's written word. It is our sword. And so when these circumstances come, we can immediately choose to turn our eyes to his word to see what God says about it. We can turn our mind to his word to see what he says about it. And we give all of our attention to God and his word. It is to pay attention, to observe. We need to observe God and his love and his mercy and his grace. Because as we observe him working those things in our own lives, we are able to then share that love, that mercy, that grace, all in abounding and limitless to others. It's to see about something, to ascertain what must be done about it. So again, circumstances of life come at you. God doesn't send them. Um, the enemy is the one who sends them, and it's to try to distract you. So the first thing that I do when that happens is I enter into thanksgiving. Thank God for that circumstance coming. And I declare his word. All things work to the good of those who love the Lord. All things, not some things, all things. Um, but then I ask him a question or two. Lord, what is this about? And what am I to do? And he is faithful to answer those questions. It is to inspect, to examine. And that is what we do when we study his word. We inspect it, we examine it, and we go a step further and we apply it. It is to look at, to behold. How many times has Jesus said, behold, see, see what I'm doing. Look. It's to experience any state or condition. Oftentimes we learn best through our experience. Our experience give us a testimony to share with others. Because Revelation 12, 11 says they overcame him. Him being the enemy, the adversary. Because of the blood of the lamb. And because of the word of our testimony, if we never have any experience, we don't have a testimony. It is to see, have an interview with, to visit. You know you can see God. And a lot of people go, no, I can't. He's invisible. But you, you can see him through how he works in your life. You can interview God. I, I do it quite often. I, I journal my prayers, um, not necessarily in sentence form sometimes. And, you know, I'll ask him specific questions, and he loves to be asked questions. So I'll ask him the questions, and then I'll leave space in my journal for his response. 
Uh, sometimes I'll sit there and wait a few minutes to see if he responds immediately. Sometimes I'll move on with my day and he will respond to me through others, through emails, um, through a book I'm reading. Um, and I'm able to notate how that response came to me, who he used to bring that response to me. And uh, I can just see and know that he has answered. I visit with him every morning. I call it my coffee with God time. When I first get up, uh, I have a pot of coffee made and I pour me a cup and I just begin to enter into his presence. Welcome Holy Spirit into my home, into my office. And we take some time together and love on one another. And listen, those are the best parts of my day. Um, and they set the mood for the rest of my day. So if you don't have a coffee time with God, I encourage you to set apart a coffee time with God, even if it means getting up a little earlier. So as we continue with Greek number 1492, it means to know, to know of anything, to know, get knowledge of, understand, perceive of any fact, the force and meaning of something which has definite meaning, to know how to be skilled, to have regard for one, to cherish, to pay attention to. Again, we're pointed back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Now, the interesting thing about Greek number 1492 is it's not mentioned in scripture at all. Um, but it is there at the same time through um, the Greek number, which was, um, I've lost my train of thought, 6063, because they're intertwined. But as far as being specifically there in that number form, it's not mentioned there at all. But God wants us to understand and to know the meaning of it. Yes, today's topic is to know. So, I want to go now to Genesis chapter 24, verse 21, which states, Meanwhile, the man was gazing at her in silence to know whether the Lord had made his journey successful or not. So, I often like to take the Greek words back to their Hebrew meaning to gain a deeper understanding. This helps especially when Jesus is speaking because he's Hebrew and it helps us to understand his thought processes as they differ from our own. So to help you understand what I mean by this, I want to look back at a quote by John MacArthur and he talks about the gaps to bridge when studying the Bible, and language is one of those gaps. He says, the Bible was originally written in Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic, and often understanding the meaning of a word or a phrase in its original language can be the key to correctly interpreting a passage of scripture. And that is why I study the way I do. I want to hold that key. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I want the divine revelation of what God is telling us in his word. So we're going to explore to know as it's found in Genesis chapter 24 verse 21. It is Strong's Hebrew number 3045. It is a primitive root, meaning to know, to know, learn to know, to perceive, to perceive and see, to find out and discern, to discriminate, distinguish, to know by experience, to recognize, admit, acknowledge, and confess, to consider, to know or be acquainted with. To know a person carnally, to know how, be skillful in, to have knowledge, to be wise, to reveal oneself. It is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, for God 
knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So this is the point where the serpent, also known as Satan, enters the scene and he deceives Eve. Notice how he twists the words to deceive Eve, to bring doubt to her mind. You know, he still tries to use this tactic today, and, and it's proven to be very successful for him. But you don't have to fall for it, because God has been teaching us how to renew our minds and to change our thoughts. You can know that his word is truthful and infallible without any question. You can know that. This number is last mentioned um, in Malachi chapter 2, verse 4, then you will know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant may continue with Levi, says the Lord of hosts. Then you will know. If God said it, you can count on it to be truth. If it is written, it is the truth, and it is for you. God desires for you to walk in victory. Doubt and unbelief will steal your victory. Those are the tools that the enemy uses to ultimately destroy you. But you have a weapon to fight back. You hold that weapon and your weapon is his holy word. When doubt and unbelief try to whisper in your ear, grab up your sword, the Bible, and fight it with God's word. Get in God's presence and he will fight for you. He'll dispatch angels of protection to surround you to push back the enemy because he desires for you to live a life filled with victory now, right now, in this present moment. My friend, do you know? Do you know beyond any shadow of a doubt, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Do you know that God desires for you to live a victorious life? Do you know that? Do you know and have understanding that every promise in God's word is for you? And it's for the here and now. Many times people think, oh, I have to get to heaven to get my inheritance. Why? Why would you have to get to heaven to, your, to get your inheritance? That's like saying, um, my father passed. He left me an inheritance. But I have to die and go to heaven to get it from him. No. It doesn't work that way. God says you can have your inheritance, at least part of it, here and now. Here and now. You can walk in his power, in his strength, in his victory, here and now. You have been given the authority of Jesus, here and now. If you want to learn how to walk more in that authority, then I encourage you, contact me today. If you want to live that victorious life and you just feel defeated and disappointed and beat down, contact me today. I can help you and it is my desire to help you. You can reach me at https colon forward slash forward slash Regina Sanders dot net. Again, that's Regina Sanders dot net. And I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to working with you. I look forward to helping you lead this victorious life that God has promised you because it's for you. It is for you and it is for here and it is for now. You know, I live a victorious life through God, through Jesus, through the guidance of Holy Spirit, I was able to defeat cancer, 
Death couldn't hold me, just as it couldn't hold Jesus in the grave. I've been resurrected in a sense, and I've been given a new lease on life. And I've chosen to live my best life, not just for myself, but so that I can help others also live their best lives. I want to help you live your best life today. So will you contact me, reginasanders.net. Now I'd like to close in prayer. Father, I thank you for each one that took the time to listen to this video, to interact with it. Father, to uh, look below the video at the transcript, which gives all of the definitions. And I just pray, Lord, that something that was said in this video moves their heart, draws them closer to you, and brings them the knowledge, gives them the ability to know, Lord, that victory is theirs today through Christ Jesus because of the work that he did on the cross, because they have applied the blood of the Lamb to their lives, and because they share the word of their testimony. That is how they defeat the enemy. I f thank you, Father, for each one, and I ask you now, surround them and protect them with your favor as a shield, and bring them peace which surpasses all understanding. Bless them, Lord, today. And Father, we bless you for this word. We bless you, Lord, because you teach us about your limitless love and about your desires. We thank you for the truth that you bring to us. And Lord, we declare today, let your glory fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Let your glory, we seek your glory. We seek your face today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. And um, come back. Uh, I've gotten a little behind in posting. I don't post quite as frequently as I once did. Um, so I'm not going to promise you that that will increase. Uh, because God has blessed me with two businesses and I am learning how to schedule my time and divide it up between the two. And uh, I am giving each hour of my day an assignment. And But I, uh, I am going to continue. This will not stop. I am going to continue this blog. I am going to continue to blog on the business page. And uh, I, I'm just excited about all that God is doing in my life life and all that he's doing in yours. So until next time, God bless you.